Snow continues to dump on the flathead and road crews prepared for even more snow this weekend. The City of Calpa wants the public's input on their new plan for the downtown district. And businesses are struggling to find seasonal help, what they're doing to adjust. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. Northwest Montana continues to get pounded with snow and it doesn't look like it's going to quit until early next week at least. For more, let's take it over to Aaron Yost with her first forecast. Aaron? Right, fluctuations though, that's the important uh, key takeaway point. We will see some dry time, but yeah, for the most part, we are going to stay pretty active here over the next several days and active in the form of snow as far as our precipitation goes. You can see everything coming in from the west southwest. We've got the colder air in place with the wind. It feels a lot colder than it actually is out there this evening. We do have winter storm warnings that continue for all of northwest Montana until noon tomorrow. Most valley locations really anywhere from two to nine inches. I realize that is a very broad spectrum. Highest number is going to be closer to the divide. We've got more details coming up in your full forecast. All right, thank you, Aaron. And these conditions made for another dicey commute and kept first responders on their toes responding to accidents. MTN's Nicole Miller spoke with city officials and a local tire shop for some tips on how you can acclimate to the winter weather. Snow is piling up across the Flathead Valley. In Columbia Falls, the snow is really coming down and visibility on the way here through Highway 2 was so poor. I could barely see the car in front of me just to urge drivers out there that these roads are getting very slick and be very cautious. When you have similar conditions to what we've experienced the last 24 hours, it's actually a wet, heavy snow, but that makes instant ice and the more traffic actually compounds that. The Montana Highway Patrol responded to almost 50 crashes or slide offs in Flathead and Lake Counties Thursday. Probably the most important part is not running around on tires that are severely worn. Your snow tires are going to increase your traction over an all season by, by tenfold. It really will. Your starting and stopping power is uh, shortened with the, with the use of studded snow tires for, for better grip. Uh, all season tires, a lot of people run all season tires, all wheel drive vehicles, studless snow tires. Um, just having traction and having tread on your tires is very important. A winter storm warning remains in effect through noon Friday for the Flathead and Mission Valleys, as well as the West Glacier and Kootenai Cabinet regions. It's highly likely Friday we'll do the same thing on a 5.30 start and get out there. If we need to be out on Saturday, we'll, we'll have some crews out on Saturday. Typically we don't, it'd be an overtime day for us, but we'll just wait and see what the weather uh, gives us and then make a call on Friday whether we need to have a Saturday work day or not. Reporting in Flathead County, Nicole Miller, MTN News. In the Montana Department of Transportation is asking folks to check the driving conditions before heading out on the roads and allowing extra time to get where you're going. The City of Kalispell has been forming a plan for revitalization of downtown for a long time and have now released their plan to the public. The plan covers a wide range of issues and improvements to the city that they want to make, including redesign the main street and the couplet that runs around the courthouse. The draft goes into detail about the vision and values, key issues and strategies on how the plan will work. Kalispell residents have the chance to read over the plan before a public meeting on Monday where city officials will hear public input before the city decides to approve or decline the draft. Today, one art gallery in the Flathead Valley hosted a show that let one artist pay local tribute to the firefighters that did all the work this summer. The Dick Idol Gallery in Whitefish hosted an evening thanking the firefighters tonight. The gallery is open to the public from 6 to 8 Thursday night to showcase artist Crystal Johnson's work that displayed images from this season's lengthy fires. Her father and grandfather were once firefighters and she relied on their stories to recreate scenes. A few firefighters were in attendance and Crystal actually gave them a painting thanking them for their service. Johnson said the night was a great chance to intertwine with the people who have been fighting to protect surrounding communities. I'm really grateful for the opportunity and I know the whole community just really respects and appreciates the firefighters and I'm glad it's kind of an outlet, a uh, place to get people together with the firefighters so that we can thank them. 10% of the other fire paintings sold at the event were given to the firefighting fund. A settlement is in the works in a case where six women accuse a former Kalispell Boy Scout leader of abusing them while they were minors. The civil lawsuit was filed against the Boy Scouts of America in Cascade County District Court, which says the Boy Scouts and the organization's Montana Council knew about the risk Bill Lenginger posted to young girls. 
Langinger, the scout leader at the time during the alleged assault in the 1970s, died in 2002. If no mediation is reached, the case will go to trial in Cascade County. Each woman could be awarded up to $10 million in damages. Governor Bullock's budget director says state leaders are close to an agreement on how to fill the state's massive budget hole, but lawmakers are saying not so fast. Wednesday, Budget Director Dan Villa said key lawmakers have tentatively agreed to the three-pronged framework for solving the budget crisis. One part spending cuts, one part tax increase, and one part budget transfers. But on Thursday, some House Republican leaders told MTN that any solution or deal is far from settled. House Majority Leader Ron Eli of Hamilton said House Republicans are still evaluating the options. He also said it's up to Bullock, a Democrat, to come forward with the spending cuts he plans to make and any other steps that would come before a special legislative session. The chairman of the House Taxation Committee, Jeff Eastman of Billings, also said he opposes any tax changes. And he says if Congress passes national tax reform, that could mean more state tax revenue. So it's premature to act on the state increases now. The Bullock administration says it's still hoping a deal can be reached this month to avoid balancing the budget entirely with spending cuts. The current job market is great for the workforce, but tough on employers because of the increased challenge to find skilled workers. This trend has also made its way to seasonal work, particularly in the retail space. I go on special assignment to show you how businesses are responding to this issue. With unemployment rates in Missoula around 3%, businesses throughout the community are having a tougher time finding skilled workers. The retail stores are no exception, looking outside the box to help attract more applicants. It all started last year with the Missoula Job Service. So last year we were talking with some of the employers and it was during the holiday season and they were just having a really tough time. By then it was too late to actually do a career fair. So we started planning one for this year. So uh, we had about 30 employers and um, they were all very appreciative with the exposure that they were getting. This is a trend that's been going on for the last few years. As the economy has improved, so has the unemployment rate. While retailers at the mall have struggled to find seasonal help, across the street at Bob Ward's, they say they haven't really noticed a drop off in applications. A lot of times there's so many applications, it's hard to keep up with all of them. Uh, people, there, there's seasonalities of when the applications are coming through heavier. Obviously, when school's getting ready to get out or when school's uh, getting ready to start, we'll see a heavier traffic a flow of applications coming through the front doors at that time. But it seems like we always have a very good pool to, uh, to go to and look for our help. In response, other businesses have become more creative to attract these applicants. Retail and all other employers in town, uh, we are starting to see wages go up a little bit because it is so competitive right now. Um, flexible schedules, working with student schedules is an important thing also. Kane says he thinks their emphasis of working with students has helped keep their workforce strong. We always try to work with college students and I think that actually is an enticement for people to come in because we're willing to work with school schedules a lot. We certainly have our full-time year-round employees that are kind of the core, but then on top of that are part-time employees that are coming in as college students or they're just looking for a side job, things like that. Harmon says a seasonal job fair is a positive step for retail stores, but she says the lack of workers isn't going away anytime soon. Retail um, historically is lower wages and they're also just looking for part-time for a short amount of couple months. Um, a lot of times people are looking for full-time work right now. And Harmon says they plan on hosting another seasonal job fair next year, but hope to hold it in September instead of October in an effort to give employers a head start on seasonal hiring. And coming up, Aaron is back with your snowy forecast for the rest of the week and weekend. And later, childbirth is never easy, but for one couple it took an unexpected twist coming up.